Hey, this is Lorena, and this is Quilter Life number seven. I believe it's number seven. I hope it's number seven. Well, it's number seven. If it's not, not I'll, I'll put a number right here. Hopefully it's number seven. Okay. Whew, number seven. In this video, I wanted to share with you some clips of some stuff that I've done. Yeah. So some stuff that I got to film in the summer, but didn't get to share because... I, I didn't have time, but I filmed it, but I didn't have time to share it. So, yeah. Summer. I'm glad it's over. I really am glad <laughs> it's over. In one of the clips I wanted to share with you, a quilt that a client gave to me a while back. So this is probably like a month ago. <laughs> And in the quilt, the quilt was already quilted, and she wanted to re-quilt a quilted quilt. So, the whole quilt's already done, and so in this video, I'm going to share, can you quilt a quilt that's already quilted? Uh, let's see how it goes. And I went ahead and put it on my machine. And I'm sharing with you that I went ahead and just sewed it on my leaders like I normally would any back fabric. Even though I had the two or three layers, the batting, the back, and the top layer. I put it on. I stitched it on the leader with um, some basing stitches. And let's see if I could do this. I went ahead and I quilted on top of the quilting. This was a hand-pieced or hand quilted, I believe, quilt. And it didn't have a lot of dense quilting. It just did a little bit stitches in the ditch. I quilted a center motif on this quilt, but made sure that didn't go beyond the binding, that it went white to the edge as if I quilted it when it wasn't on binding. So in this video, you're gonna go ahead and see this beautiful quilting motif on it. And I will also post pictures of what it looked like when it was completely done. And yeah, so I'm just sharing that with you. I did a very pretty bird filigree on the quilt. And here you can see her stitches, but mine, they were so small, she didn't do a lot of quilting. But it filled in the space. So you can see her stitching, because you could see the rows that she quilted. And you could see my filigree. I tried to get right to the edge of her bindy, um, and in some areas I went on top of the bindy, which I think is okay. Just did it in two spots. In Quilters Life's videos, I try to integrate things that maybe long arm quilters don't share or a problem that I'm dealing with. And in this video, I'm sharing with you a saggy back fabric. <laughs> sometimes, you know, it doesn't even matter if the person did the back fabric well. Sometimes, maybe when I sewed it on the leader, I didn't sew it right, but usually I try to. Or maybe when I rolled it, I didn't roll it right. Or I don't know. I don't know what happens to the back fabric. It really doesn't matter if the back fabric is pieced or if the back fabric is not pieced. I don't know if maybe when it's put on, it's put on where it has a stretchier area and it's not put on where it has more of that stiffness. I don't know. But I end up having, no, I end up having a saggy back. Well, not my saggy back, but a saggy back and uh, and it's only a saggy back on one side of the quilt it's not a saggy back on both sides of the quilt it's just like on one side that it's saggy back and on one side it's a real tight back it, you could pop a quarter on it but I don't know I don't know if I didn't roll it right I don't know if I didn't sew it right I honestly don't know in this video, I'm sharing with you one of the simplest solutions. Instead of taking it off or re-whirling it or just messing with the back, I use two pins. Two pins. Two of them. What I go ahead and do is I literally pin 
the back fabric, the saggy back, pull it to the leader bar, and I pin to the other section of the back fabric. I pin it one way, and then I pin it the other way. So if in the video you don't see it, I literally do an X. I pin it in an angle, 45 degree angle, and then I get another pin and go in at another degree angle. And what that tends to do, it locks in that saggy back, and it kind of straightens it out and evens it out, and then you don't have saggy back no more. Here's real pedaling and the opposite end, you saw it's real tight. So what I do is I pull this as much as I can, like that. Then I get one needle in one direction and I get the, another needle and I make an X in the opposite direction. And then it locks in the quilt. And now this is not puddling like it was. Then I get my pulleys and just straighten it. So it still puddles a little bit, but not like it was. So that's how I deal with saggy back fabric. So I wanted to share how I fix that. It happens here and there randomly to me. It's sometimes common and sometimes uncommon. Sometimes the back fabric, all of it is just beautiful. Maybe I need to do an experiment. Maybe I need to figure out why. But at this current time, I, I don't know why. And so I use two safety pins. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I do deal with the saggy back. This is what I want to give away. If you want one, make a comment. At the end of September, I will mail it to whoever wants to quilt it. I'm not giving it to you quilted. I'm just giving it to you. You need a quilt. So it's not a done quilt. This is the poly knit one. La -da. It's huge. I don't know if anybody would want it, but I'm offering, okay, free. I'll ship it to you for free. I paid $29 for it. I just thought it'd be cool looking. If not, I'll quilt it. And then, uh, finish quilting it and I'll put it, give it to, I don't know, some random stranger who would be interested. It's huge, okay? So it's like a king size quilt. And I'm gonna give this one away. They're both poly knit, okay? This one. This one's more of a throw. Kind of retro, not finished. If you are interested, make a comment, and probably like at the end of September, I'll send it to you. Not done, just quilt tops. Yeah, I'll give them to you. Now, if no one makes a comment, I'll just quilt them myself. And so what I did. It's uh, I'm winded. I, mean, I am going to the gym, okay? So it's not that I'm out of shape. It's mold. This is one of them that I got at a Goodwill store. But look at my quilting. It's not done binding. I need to bind it this week sometime. Look at my quilting. It literally took three bobbins to do that quilting a row. Okay. That is a lot of bobbins. I also found this quilt. Look how pretty she is. I paid $55 for her. That's where I get to going. Like, look how pretty though. It was well done. She didn't have holes, or I haven't seen any holes. And whoever did this put a lot of love into it. No, that one's not. I'm not giving that one away. I want to quilt it and get it done, and then put the binding and do all that fun stuff, and then I may do giveaway I don't know I don't know that was I don't, I don't know yet okay wanted to share that in the summer I went to Seguin and uh, we went to some restaurant it was called I think it was a water power plant in Seguin or it used to be I don't know um, and they have a restaurant there 
and so some of this footage is of the restaurant. It is beautiful to go over there. Seguin is about maybe like 20, 30 minutes over here from Shirts. Um, it's a really kind of sleepy, slow kind of town. So in this uh, footage, you're going to see me driving down that town and walking that, uh, I think it's Guadalupe River, I'm not exactly sure, and just the restaurant. Now let me just say, to give you an honest review of the restaurant, the food was okay. We paid a lot for the food and it was okay, but I believe that the the energy of the space, being able to go on a tower and see the water in a different perspective and eating right next to the water was really a lot of fun. I think that's what made the restaurant, the food, way well, it, it needs some work, but, but it was a nice time with my kids. All right, so that's that footage. <laughs> That's a pretty good quilt. 